hey, uh, this thing. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, you are. Okay, okay, perfect. So, um, thank you, everyone. Uh, today is uh, one more session of oncology beyond the obvious. Uh, this is uh, this platform is uh, a webinar based platform which Parik sir and myself we started around one and a half years back. And uh, once a month, every second Tuesday of uh, the month from 7 to 8.30 p.m., we are having this webinar. And I'm pleased to say that it is uh, gaining some popularity, uh, which obviously uh, you know pleases uh, us. And today, uh, Dr. Sachin Hingmire made my day by saying that, that this OBTO, now they have uh, put it in as an academic program in their institute uh, for uh, everybody to benefit out of it. And it really, really pleases that we are able to do uh, some justice to the topic which we select. <clears throat> so how the topic goes is we um, select one particular paper and in that, that paper is uh, thrashed out in one and a half hours of this program. The first, uh, I present a few slides about the paper, what uh, we, uh, discuss, we are discussing today. After that, we select one eminent person in our uh, group uh, and to, for them, uh, for us to interview that uh, particular person uh, who is considered expert in that particular field. This will go on for half an hour. After that, on the same paper, there is a panel discussion uh, which is being moderated again by uh, one of the expert in the field. And in the end, uh, we will have an expert opinion and that expert summarizes and gives his or her opinion as well, uh, apart from uh, what has been discussed in last one and a half hours. Not necessarily that every paper is a practice changing paper, not necessarily that every paper which is from a big institute has to have uh, <clears throat> the practice changing outlook. Uh, it is for us to decide whether in Indian scenario, we accept the conclusion of that paper and but we have to thrash out why are we accepting or why are we not accepting. So with that thing in background, I welcome all of you for this one yet more episode of OBTO. Uh, Opto, as Ullas Patra very uh, famously says that, uh, and today's paper is a meta-analysis on breast cancer. Can I have my first slide? <clears throat> Dr. Purvish Parikh, sir, normally is uh, the one who introduces the topic, but he's traveling today. He's going to US and that's the reason, unfortunately, he's not there with us. But he's the backbone of OBTO, as I have told multiple number of times without his support, uh, OBTO would not be where it is today. Today's topic is breast cancer meta-analysis by EBC-TCG. Next slide, please. So uh, it is the last month of 2023. This particular uh, publication has come in Lancet. That is anthracycline containing and taxane containing chemotherapy for early stage uh, breast, preble breast cancer. A patient level meta-analysis of 1 lakh women from 86 randomized trials. And this is something which we are going to discuss today. Can I have the next slide, please? I'm going to give a very gist of it because uh, we are going to discuss paper in detail. So this is the red one, which is the highlighted one, is the gist for today or the conclusion for today. That is, if you give texane and anthracycline together, as we used to give as TAC regimen, Docetexel, adriamycin, and cyclophosphamide till I think 2009 and 10. If you combine the two together, then the mortality and the recurrence proportion rate in early breast cancer is better as compared to individual either texane or adriamycin if they are given sequentially. That is the gist of this particular meta-analysis. Next slide, please. So this, uh, you know, uh, multiple papers have been taken. Uh, this is the second part of the main forest plot chart. As you can see in the bottom of the slide, 
the left hand side favors the texin plus anthracycline and the right hand side favors texin only next slide please so this is uh, i wanted to highlight this particular paper because ebctcg normally gives inversely proportional kaplan mayer or whatever you call normally you see starting from 100 they start from 1 minus 100 that is from zero this is the classical uh, pattern of ebc tcg presenting the survival graphs and the advantage as you can see the red line is the combination and it has the lesser uh, survival better survival lesser recurrence lesser mortality as the red line is below that next slide please Yes, the arrow which I have sent is the main crux. Again, uh, recurrence risk score is or hazard ratio, whatever you call it, is 0.58, highly statistically significant. And this is in favor of when you combine texane plus anthracycline. And this is out of 2,469 patients out of 100,000 patients. Next slide, please. <clears throat> If you do the subset analysis of the various aspects, there are a few things which highlights. One, HER2 positive, there is not a particular advantage of this particular TAC. Uh, if you have well-differentiated tumor, again, it does not have so much of this thing. It has better advantage N0. Of course, we are looking at early breast cancer, but the moment the lymph node increases in size, it does not have any particular advantage. So <clears throat> HER2 positive and ER strongly positive and well differentiated. Somehow the combination may not work as well as the other subgroups. Next slide, please. This was the final interpretation. As I mentioned, instead of reading the slides, it says simply that if you give TAC, it is better than six cycles of docetaxel and cyclophosphamide. Cumulative dose of each drug is far better. And that is something which is a takeaway from this particular meta-analysis, which we will discuss. Uh, but that was the gist. Next slide, please. And the next slide, please. The EBC TCG is very famous <clears throat> for giving meta-analysis right from 2005 till 2023, 2022, 2021. But I have selected two such meta-analysis, one which was published in 2019. Next slide, please. And this particular meta-analysis, contrary to the current meta-analysis, says that the sequential two weekly is better than concurrent three weekly of any form of chemotherapy. This was 2019 conclusion. Next slide, please. <clears throat> As I mentioned, this was the conclusion of that particular 2019 meta-analysis. Next slide, please. <clears throat> then the 2011, the famous meta-analysis where a lot of practice changing things were discussed. Next slide, please. So they did a lot of comparison, direct comparison and indirect comparison between different polychemotherapy regimens. Next slide, please. And this was, if you see here, the texan is found to be better than non texan The next slide, please. And anthra was found to be better than CMF. There's nothing new, but in 2011, anthracycline became the landmark and Texan became the landmark and 2019 told us next slide please so th this i gave in a reverse and so to concluding slide of minus 2011 meta-analysis confirmed that anthracycline is better than cmf and Texan is better than non-texin 2019 said that the sequential dose dense is better than any other form of polychemotherapy and now 2023 this particular meta-analysis says that the TAC is better than the sequential. So not much mention of those dense in this particular trial. Uh, can, can we go back to Dr. Chetan Deshmukh? Uh, <clears throat> and can we close the slide? Okay, perfect. So based on this particular background, I would like to now in, invite our expert who is being interviewed, uh, Dr. Chetan Deshmukh. Uh, Dr. Chetan Deshmukh is an extremely dear friend, uh, colleague, 
and i always tell is one of the simplest of human being i have come across one of the most uncomplicated simple in addition to that i have to say chetan is also a marathi manus chetan wherever there is an opportunity he will start speaking in marathi he will start giving some satirical jokes in marathi and quotes in marathi in fact uh, his love for marathi literature was so evident that once uh i was just asking that this uh, pula desh pande is one of the famous guy na and chetan got little offended you you are talking about pula desh pande amish you are talking about he is a legend and i still remember that conversation <laughs> but as i said that is one of the most uncomplicated non complicated person always ready to help uh chetan has done his mbbs md and then dm he was in fact the first batch of dm from tata memorial hospital after that chetan immediately joined in pune dinanath mangeshkar hospital and chetan i think since then you are in dinanath mangeshkar hospital only a uh, long inning um, chetan also has uh, served in kolhapur in meerut and he's also and visiting professor in bj medical college pune uh, one of the highlight about dr chetan deshmukh is that he is one of the legend in clinical trials i think he has written in his cv more than 75 but i remember 100 clinical trials chetan aapka ho gaya hai because you told me once that century of clinical trial has been done <clears throat> so uh, chetan knows the nuances of all the clinical trials so this meta analysis also should be a cake walk for him which is one of the extremely difficult paper for me to read about it <laughs> and chetan also has been an honorary editor to american cancer society with that i uh, welcome you uh, chetan on this platform thank you so much for joining us thank you amish thank you for the kind words of introduction right so chetan we have 25 minutes to go forward so let's start uh, trying to answer few of the questions here so chetan uh, this meta analysis ebc tpg and i presented few other meta analysis of the past also my first question to you is when were the last 10 of your practice changing uh, decisions have been based on meta analysis in decisions that was probably the mac and c meta analysis for head and neck cancer that changed us a lot then the use of uh, trastuzumab one year versus two year that was uh, uh, another practice changing i mean it just reaffirmed our practice then the addition of concurrent chemotherapy uh, especially in the radiation uh, as an adjunct to radiation that was something which we have actually taken it in the negative sense and we've started moving away from concurrent chemotherapy so uh, those were the meta analysis which changed uh, practice for us the addition of chemotherapy to cervical cancer came way back that time we were already in our uh, residency program and we were practicing it so it didn't change but it reaffirmed our belief that yes this is what we are doing and this is correct <clears throat> right so out of 10 or out of 20 probably one practice changing would be because of meta analysis possibly maybe possibly. more instead of one maybe two or three but maybe not two many or so you are a firm believer of meta analysis i must say that you know that is a usual distinct choice i my practice changing i think mac and c meta analysis affirmed 5% and 7% but otherwise there were we were practicing on that but yes one of the practice changing is uh, rt in lung cancer in meta analysis i think that is something which we all drafted away from radiotherapy and sudeep gupta's meta analysis about 6 months a uh, shorter duration versus longer i think awesome. that really affirmed our practice something which is there so with that uh, dr chetan let me ask you a question when did you last use tat in breast cancer i think it was in 2009 or 10 In the last ten years, I don't remember using using a single tag regime. Single tag. Last thirteen years. In fact, mine also was two thousand nine ten. And last six cycles of dosit excellent cyclophosphamide. That was in two thousand thirteen fourteen for a lady who was triple negative, had some renal issue, and also some cardiac issue. And she was triple negative, two or three nodes positive. So we had to give her chemotherapy. and cyclo with uh, docetaxel was the uh, only safe regime as per the cardiologist and the nephrologist right so in fact last 10 years we, you have neither used tac nor used dc 
I could say that. No. Perfect. Yes. So 2023, this meta-analysis, let's look at that, whether it has uh, changed our thought process, which we left behind 10 years back. Okay. So uh, let's come to the second part of it, uh, Chetan. Anthracyclines in breast cancer. Uh, HER2 positive. Do you use TCH or TCHP or AC followed by TH? AC followed by TH. And the reason of you using anthracycline when the world is moving away from anthracycline in HER2 positive? Because we there is data from the BCIRV6 that it is equivalent. In fact, there is a slight betterment in the anthra arm compared to the TCHP arm. Uh, Safety-wise, anthra has a very predictable toxicity profile compared to docetaxel. But I must say that I don't. it's not that I don't use uh, docetaxel uh, carboplatin trust at all. If it's a young fit lady, uh, especially less than 50, 55 year old, definitely TCHP is something which is uh, feasible. But uh, for a lady who is beyond that or has other issues, then probably AC followed by TH is easier to tolerate. Okay, perfect. Well accepted regimen. Uh, triple negative breast cancer. IO plus PACLI plus CARBO or PACLI plus CARBO into six cycles or AC followed by T? If it's in the new adjuvant setting, then it is AC followed by PACLI CARBO, Dr. Gupta sir's regime. That is my default regime now for the past uh, five, six months since he has uh, uh, showed us in SABC. But earlier also it was AC followed by PACLI taxel. I've started adding it after Dr. Gupta's uh, uh, paper. So people who can afford uh, IO, uh, would you Definitely. follow P0522 yes. regimen? I, I would, I would. But sadly, I haven't got an opportunity uh, so far to use it. Uh, so okay. yes, but when it uh, when the opportunity presents and I have a suitable patient, I would definitely add to it. And four cycles of DC. What is your indication of using just four cycles of DC? A young lady who is ERPR positive, her two negative uh, for this patient, you know, when, when I'm not very sure whether I'm supposed to give chemo or not, that is a time when probably I, I want to save the anthra related cardiotoxicity in a young lady. That is a time when I would probably use four cycles of TC, but largely even that we've started moving away from it uh, for a young lady who is ERPR positive. Uh, I would still use four AC, uh, of late, we've had some bad experiences with TC, so I would still stick to AC. And if it's oh. not positive, then it's AC followed by taxing. So you are an adriamycin uh, fan, yes. looks like that. Yes. So this particular meta-analysis, um, you know, maybe next two minutes or so, Chetan, uh, what have you read and how have you interpreted this meta-analysis? So I had a few interpretations out of it. One is that... Uh, there is definite reduction in breast cancer mortality with chemotherapy, uh, AC better than CMF. And there is an additional benefit of adding taxins. So uh, that is that is something which has been now proven beyond doubt. The only thing is, is it the same strategy for a very low risk tumor? Somebody who is strongly ERPR positive T1, T2 tumor, are we justified in giving the whole hog of uh, AC followed by taxin or we can cut down this something which I could not figure out from this. Uh, if it's uh, only taxin versus anthrataxin, then anthrataxin is better than only taxins. And uh, if it's uh, a taxin, then this meta-analysis tells me that docetaxel is actually a better bit than paclitaxin. That's what uh, some of the trials have shown, that if you are going to use uh, especially three-weekly schedule, then instead of paclitaxel, docetaxel is a better bet. Cumulative dose is another thing which they have shown that it it does make a lot of difference. So if your cumulative dose of anthracycline is 300 per meter square and uh, docetaxel is 450 per meter square, that works out to be the best for the patient compared to uh, uh, the sequential ones where the dose intensity goes down. You are giving only uh, 240 per meter square of so and uh, about 300 per meter square of uh, uh, docetaxel. Uh, there is no difference between anthrataxin versus uh, taxane carboplatin and uh, the sequence doesn't matter. So you can give uh, taxin first followed by anthra or you can give anthra followed by taxin. It doesn't matter. And uh, 
uh, if it's a single agent uh, chemotherapy, single agent uh, taxin, then that is definitely inferior to most other anthra uh, containing or combination rate. That is what I could make out from this meta analysis. So <clears throat> let's take one by one. Um, one of there that anthracycline plus taxin is better than taxin uh, uh, or sequential. The TAC regimen, 2,500 patients data of the three trials, out of which 100,000, so it is not even 2.5% Chetan. Based yes. on 2.5%, they have come to this particular conclusion. Are you okay with that? Because this looks too small a uh, proportion for me to look at it. I'm not okay with it with, for two reasons. One is, of course, that it is just 2.5% of the whole figure. By the way, Amish, I just wanted to make a point that 100,000 figure is not only of this meta-analysis. It is Correct. also an updated figure. So some of the patients are from the earlier meta-analysis as well. Nevertheless, let us take it as at face value that we have 100,000 women. And we are looking at 2,500 patients data, which says that combination of docetaxel, doxorubicin and cyclophosphamide is better than docetaxel and cyclophosphamide. Most of the comparators have been those are TC regime. Correct. So I, I, I don't see, I remember seeing a head-on direct comparison where I have another head-on comparison in the form of NSAB, NSABP B38. Now this trial compared TAC versus AC followed by docetaxel versus AC, for, uh, do, sorry, dose dense AC followed by dose dense Pakli and dose dense AC plus Paclitaxel and gemcitabine. Now that gemcitabine arm, let us keep it aside. This study, NSABP B38, had uh, over close to 5,000 patients, 1,600 patients in each arm, 1,600 plus in uh, each arm. So that is uh, that is quite an impressive data as well. And that showed that uh, TAC is equal to dose dense AC followed by paclitaxel. So I, I I still don't see that I why I should change my practice based on this meta analysis when this was proven in 2013. So you know coming to that NSAPP B38 is definitely the one which you know sort of uh, after that we were convinced about what we are practicing right now, and even EBC TCG's previous meta analysis of 2019. Nine. And if you see, there are so many slides. And yesterday, when I was looking at the YouTube and Onclife, 2020 was flooded with this meta analysis. You know, every platform people were talking. And now the same EBC TCG group is telling us to combine that when they told us that dose then sequential is better than the three weekly yeah. regimen of combination. Correct. Why is this dichotomy, Chetan? You know, why do you think they uh, published? Amol has just written in the group that old hat, uh, old uh, duck out of old hat, nothing else. What do you think of this? I I, I sort of agree with Amol that uh, you know, we have actually given up. Most of the world has actually given up on tag. I don't think. TAC is practiced very rampantly all over the world and it's only Indians who are not doing it. Most of us have moved away from TAC regime for various reasons. One is, of course, toxicity. But toxicity is no major concern now that growth factors are easily available. The other concern is the use of trastuzumab-based therapy. For HER2 new positive patient, you would like to start anti-HER2 therapy as soon as possible. Correct. With the sequential regime, you can start after the uh, from the fifth cycle onwards. For uh, combination, you have to wait till you complete all six cycles. That is one thing. The second thing is for uh, like uh, this meta-analysis doesn't take into consideration. Uh, of course, they've taken only randomized trials. So Tolani regime is something which they have not uh, looked into because it's not a randomized study, but it has shown such an impressive survival that for a very low risk patient, T1, T2 tumor, ERPR positive or two uh, positive patients, the seven year PFS is in excess of 92% with such a small and easily tolerable regime that you can give it to an 80-year-old lady. So uh, I think that uh, just pushing for a uh, TAC regime based on this meta-analysis and that too with uh, 2,500 odd patients, when we have another comparator trial, which had uh, almost doubled the patients. <clears throat> right. So that is something which is uh, there. You talked about HER2. Even ERPR strong positive. Do you do we really think that any particular patient we would say ER hundred percent PR hundred percent early breast cancer 
and with you know say assuming luminal b ki 67 or 40% in a young fit lady with uh, six lymph nodes positive would you be tempted to use tac in based on this particular uh, meta analysis i would still stick to uh, ac followed by t uh, in this population because there the driver is of course not only uh, my uh, aim is to get in my hormone therapy also soon for a young fit lady who's erp are positive uh, i don't want to put her through a lot of toxicity i want to finish my chemo quickly dose dense i finish in 4 months and then she goes on uh, hormonal therapy right away so i would okay. use I, i i won't use tac in her you won't use tac in her okay so uh, before we come to one of the positive aspects according to me let me since we are talking let me ask a 40 year old gynecologist i had this particular patient triple negative breast cancer okay and uh, this patient particularly patient clinically has uh, you know uh, say uh, patient has three lymph nodes positive with ki 67 of 60% uh, patient is a gynecologist surgery is there so paclitaxel is sort of semi out would you offer to use tac in this particular patient based on this meta analysis i think somewhere it confirms that this thing that yes we can you think of it i would i would think of it i would certainly give it a thought i would talk to the lady that it has a small but definite increase in the toxicity the uh, i would discuss about the possibility of febrile neutropenia remember febrile neutropenia and neutro neutropenic infections were way too common with uh, tac even the original paper almost uh, i think it was 2.4 versus 24% febrile neutropenia incidence which is uh, 10 times so i'll discuss this with the patient but then again you know you put in a very niche patient that you have a lady who is triple negative uh, one to three nodes that is the exact subset which had shown i think the maximum benefit uh, with uh, tac regime over Correct. the other regime so yes i would be tempted to use uh, tac in a, i i am going to offer it to her but after a lot of discussion and deliberation with her so before this meta analysis we would have given ac followed by docetaxel to this patient right yes <laughs> so this yes. matter is somewhere 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 some mind set has you know little bit changed about it which i don't deny because you know lancet publication ebc tcg but are we really justified because i'll be still afraid there's 1.8 to 2% mortality of tac mortality you know yes. uh, i would uh, in an early breast cancer in adjuvant setting to accept that much of mortality is actually too much so that is something which is not there uh, amol i have been reading your messages very diligently i think in panel we sham sir will definitely discuss that one of the take away point uh, chetan i think somewhere we practice but we loosely practice this uh, meta analysis sort of confirmed that cumulative dose and and more the cumulative dose is better what did you read about that in this or what did you take away in this meta analysis so it tells me that in the adjuvant setting especially when we are looking at an early breast cancer curative setting we cannot compromise on the dose we should not compromise on the dose if we are uh, if we are to give the patient a, a good uh, uh, overall survival then the dose intensity and uh, the cumulative dose which we are sent in has to be good okay uh, so the normally in adjuvant setting otherwise also we don't compromise too much on the dose but they have said that the six cycles probably is better than the four cycles and that's why this meta analysis is important see nsapp b30 uh, had four cycles of tac and they found that uh, eight cycles is better than four cycles or it is you know sort of this thing but bcirb 005 very crystal clear said that you know sequential eight cycles and six cycles of tac are no different particularly per se but when you combine these and then they have tried to do this meta analysis in a quite uh, extensive way they have identified uh, individual patient data also and they have said that when you combine all these together then tac seems to be better then six cycles of dc again i know it's a confusing question so, but chetan um, so in that particular uh, so uh, particular, permit yeah, me to interrupt you amish yeah, See, yeah they have always said that it is tac versus dc you know they they are trying to do away with anthracyclines and then they have shown that anthracyclines cannot be uh, ignored they have to be there 
in this, when we are comparing TAC versus sequential dose dense, we are still giving anthracycline and in a good dose. So uh, we are just 80%, we are at 80% of the dose of uh, TAC in uh, two months. So that is, uh, you know, that I think that is why, that is why sequential regimes have been so popular. So Advait has written one question that TAC into six has never been compared with TC into six. Yeah, so it's only TC into four. Right. So uh, Chetan, let me ask you a ulta question that a takeaway from this meta-analysis, if I take as that, I don't want to give enthracycline to any patient. I give TC into six cycles and I'm safe legally. Is that the right conclusion out of this meta-analysis? No, I don't think so. In fact, <laughs> I, this, this meta-analysis uh, reaffirms the position of anthracyclines that they are a very important drug in uh, breast cancer treatment. And uh, remember, the early part of the meta-analysis uh, says that the benefit is irrespective of the tumor subtype, age. Absolutely. The, yeah. So it, it's in all, all, uh, all subsets of breast cancer. It helps. So I, I don't think uh, this is the message which I'm going to take away. I still, uh, I'm going to say that, well, the only message I have, I can take away is, well, I may use TAC for some patient because yes, it has shown to be the, the best regime uh, com combining uh, all, all three in select situations. That's about it. Right. So Chetan, my last question to you and before and after that, you can give your uh, final takeaways out of this EBC TCG, whether it is a changing, it is going to change the practice or not. But we have multiple options which have resurfaced again. Six cycles of TAC, six cycles of TC and uh, four AC followed by 40 dose tens. Will your practice change and uh, which are the patients in your practice where you will select either of these three regimen? Let's remove HER2 new positive, take it, take that out. Is it ER positive, heavy nodal, high risk patient or triple negative breast cancer? Let's talk of only these two subsets. Okay. Six cycles of TAC. Will you use on your practice? Maybe only a few patients with a, a, a triple negative disease with a, a small... Uh, node positive disease and a very fit patient, I may think of it. So last 13 years, last 15 years, you didn't think of TAC and now you yeah. will think of TAC. So now there is some <laughs> data. Yeah, there is, some data. So there, there is some data, but then I would still uh, thrash it out with the patient. I would discuss uh, NACBP B38 with her as well, that in place of uh, six, you can take eight cycles and uh, probably achieve the same amount of benefit, but then this is the evidence we have. And then if right. the patient is willing to come for, uh, for TAC regime, yes, then maybe only for that patient. But somebody who is above 50, somebody who is a, who's a diabetic or had the slightest cardiac issue, the ejection fraction is borderline, just 50% or something. Then I would shy away from it. So in that particular patient, uh, non-anthra eligible patients, would you give six cycles of TC? No, I, I would not give. Uh, if it's if there is a clear-cut contraindication for anthracycline, then I'm left with no choice. In that case, my regimes are going to be six cycles TC or paclitaxel carboplatin or docetaxel carboplatin, one of the, one of the three. If it's a clear-cut contraindication, but if there is no clear-cut contraindication, I see no reason to move away from anthracycline. So, paclitaxel and carboplatin, even in HR-positive patients, you would use, or only in triple negative? No, only in triple negative. Only in triple negative. Okay, perfect. Yes. And the uh, four AC followed by four T dose then still remains the treatment of choice. Yes. So, would you say that this, so how would you rate this uh, meta-analysis, which is by one of the largest group of early breast cancer, very well-respected group, and also in the Lancet publication in 2023, 100,000 patients data, where would you rate? And then we will close this interview. I definitely, the meta-analysis is good. No doubt, it, it tells me uh, some good things about uh, chemotherapy, it reaffirms our uh, practice. The only thing, only bad thing about it is, it is, it says that TAC is the best regime, which we don't agree. 
I don't agree with that. The TAC is the best regime. There are other regimes which are comparable, which also give a fair dose of uh, taxin and doxorubicin, and are achieving uh, equally good results. So, uh, apart from that, the meta-analysis it's an commendable effort, great effort. You're looking at uh, individual patient data of hundred thousand patients is no joke. It it is it is definitely a great effort. Right. Chetan, thank you so much. I am supposed to ask you the question. I'm not supposed to give my <laughs> recommendation. I have little different thoughts about this meta-analysis and almost every meta-analysis of BBC, TCG, what I read. But I'll now leave it to Shyam Agarwal, sir, to tell us uh, what does he and his panelists think of this. And with that, uh, can I, and Chetan, you have to stay back Is you are one of yes, the panelists. Yes. Can I invite Shyam Agarwal, sir? Uh, I don't think anybody in this particular group of 100 people who are attending this, Sham sir, needs any introduction. Sir, right from I think last 20 to 25 years, I have seen, seen that Sham sir's every panel, every moderation has up-to-date knowledge and his insights into every topic is amazing. Uh, and Sham sir, I'm not returning the favor what you did to me on Sunday, so don't say I am saying this from the heart. Uh, <laughs> You dissect out the things quite nicely and we learn a lot out of that. Over to, to you, Sham sir. And uh, can we invite the panelist for Sham sir? Uh, okay, so I will invite... Uh, I will invite the panelists, keep this slide as it is. Uh, Dr. Chetan Deshmukh is one of the panelists, Dr. Shailesh Bondarde. Uh, Dr. S. Krupa Shankar, Dr. Nikhil Pati, Dr. Advait Gore, and Dr. Amol Akhade. Uh, I thank everybody uh, for attending this panel. Over to you, Shyam, sir. Yeah, so good evening, uh, uh, Amish, and thanks for the kind words. And uh, so I think a lot of things have been uh, discussed, but uh, uh, there are issues uh, which are always there. In a, in a setting of breast cancer and that too, whether it is neo-adjuvant or adjuvant. So I think uh, the best way I thought was to bring out uh, some controversial cases and uh, you know, present it to the, to the uh, panel members and find out uh, what they are doing or uh, what they, uh, I mean, is this paper which has been discussed or presented uh, is going to alter their practice, you know, in the in the near future. So I think uh, we are going to be open to discussion, comments from from all the panelists. Uh, so let's go to the next slide. So I think uh, the area which, to my mind, so you know, I'm basically going to cover areas where uh, you know anthracyclines perhaps uh, may not be really really required because uh, I think that is the buzzword that you uh, may not require to give uh, anthracyclines to all patients in the adjuvant or in the neoadjuvant setting. So this is a patient who is uh, 45 years perimenopausal, uh, you know, infiltrating breast cancer, ERPR positive, HER2 negative. And as we understand that oncotype DX can help us, uh, you know, uh, decide whether to give or not to give chemo. So oncotype DX is high, 36. So this is a tumor size of 1.5 centimeter. So the next slide. So these are the options, uh, you know, which I thought, but there is always an, any other option also. Uh, four AC followed by four T, uh, four TC, six TC, TAC regimen or FEC regimen. So the, the idea is to figure out in a patient who is uh, pre or perimenopausal, a small tumor node negative, uh, with high oncotype uh, DX. So I think uh, I'm being bombarded uh, by questions from uh, Amol's on uh, both the sides, question and answer session and on the on the chat box. So, so Amol, you have to start here. Uh, I think Amol Akhale is on the panel. So what do you think, you know, we should be doing in such an individual lady? Or what yeah, do you think? Yeah, yeah, in, in my own practice, um... I will discuss with the patient and I will discuss option of 4TC with this patient for this particular case, but I will be comfortable giving 4SC for the four taxons also. Okay, so what you're saying is the first two options, uh, either 4TC yeah. or 4AC followed by 
four more tigers. Right. So, so Krupa, do you agree to this? I mean, uh, do you agree to this four TC concept? Uh, is it, uh, you know, it gives you, uh, you know, equivalent efficacy, uh, you know, than as compared to six TC or a anthracycline based regimen, Krupa? Hi, sir. And so, um, so I would probably vote here for six into TC. And the reason why I say that, because if you, if you look at this meta analysis and, uh, you know, if you look at the hormone receptor positive and node negative subset, that's probably the one subset which actually didn't seem to benefit much from the addition of an anthracycline. And again, if you're looking at somebody with a recurrence score of 36, we know even that's not perfect because we talk about how precise is the precision medicine that we're practicing today. And even that incorporates your clinical risk score as well, based on the tumor size and grade as well. So you've got to put that into perspective. It's no longer that the genomic risk always overrides the clinical risk. I think it's a combination of the genomic and the clinical risk put together. So I think, you know, in this early early breast cancers, T1C in this case, node negative, strongly receptor positive, just based on a recurrence score of 36, I would probably be tempted towards giving, and I'm going to stick my neck out and say probably 6 into TC for this patient. Right. So so I, we already see, you made very valid points. You know, we haven't told you the KI-67. We haven't discussed the, you know, the differentiation of the tumor. Uh, so those are the issues which may influence the uh, the choice of regimen or maybe the number of cycles because Amol said 4TC and uh, you said 6TC. So, so one thing which I'm getting here is that a patient who is strongly ERPR positive or to new negative, uh, both the uh, panelists are willing to, uh, you know, give the anthracycline. Uh, I'll, I'll go to... Because, uh, because uh, can I have a point, sir? Because in the, in, in the supplement, if you see... For T1 tumor, there is not much advantage of giving anthracycline. And they have very clearly given the differential in supplement about tumors less than 2 cm, 2 to 5 cm, or more than 5 cm. So for less than 2 cm, there is no additional advantage of anthra as per this meta-analysis in the supplement. Right. So I think that uh, both of you are agreeing uh, that uh, skipping anthracycline is not a, uh, not a bad thought. Uh, Dr. Uh, Adwat, uh, your, your thoughts, uh, Dr. Adwat? Uh, I, I uh, so this is this is not just taking into consideration the current meta analysis that we are discussing. Right, but right. If so you have TC has been practiced now based on you know whatever so this, data we have, yeah. Yes, so this this data uh, of uh, giving TC has been in discussion since 2015 when the first network meta analysis was published, which showed that giving TC six cycles was equivalent to giving four AC four T. Right. Uh, though there was no specific trial which looked at uh, six TC. It was an inference that 4TC may not be adequate for all the patients. Even in early stage, 6TC is what should be the standard of care. And for this patient uh, uh, case that you've put up, sir, my choice would be to offer six cycles of TC for this patient. Yeah, absolutely. So I think uh, you, you really, um, I mean, I think there is a recent data published in 2022 uh, where 6TC uh, uh, was considered non-inferior to anthracycline-based uh, you know, uh, program. So the, I think the thoughts from uh, Dr. Shalesh uh, Mundarde, please. Uh, I, I also agree with both the panelists. What is important is also the clinical situation here. I mean, if you have a grade one tumor, uh, T1, N0, uh, it's just unfortunate that, you know, that the oncotype DX score is high. Uh, in my practice, I still, uh, I'm, I favor giving four cycles of AC and no taxes as of uh, now. Four Not going out to this four right. cycles of AC. Right, right. So, right. I mean, we understand that that is an, uh, not an inferior regimen, uh, but then uh, the issues of toxicity uh, perhaps, right. you know, uh, might uh, sway a person towards uh, TC rather than AC. So, yes, um, I mean, there's an except. Dr. Nikhil? Uh, sir, yes, I agree. And I would also prefer to give four cycles of uh, TC, sir. Uh, I would just uh, keep in mind to avoid the cyclophosphamide or the alkylator-induced toxicity. So mm -hmm. I would just keep it at four TC rather than six TC. Okay. So interesting. You know, we've got, I've got like five of these uh, <laughs> panelists. So, you know, uh, two are saying two TC, one said four AC. Uh, I think uh, one or two said six TC. So, uh, Chetan, uh, so where are you now? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> so, you. Uh, so, you know, I mean, this is very interesting, fascinating, you know, yes. that I mean, uh, same patient and you getting uh, four different answers, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, 
uh, I agree with uh, Advait and uh, uh, someone else in the chat box also mentioned that uh, if it's, I think Dr. Krupa also said that if it's a very early stage tumor, less than two centimeter ERPR positive, uh, let us uh, say that let, we don't have the grade or AI67, but then in this subgroup, if the benefit of anthra is not going to be much, then I would stick to only four cycles of uh, TC and not go on to six cycles. Right. So, so I think uh, the consensus is building towards TC and, uh, you know, anthracyclines perhaps can be avoided in a patient uh, who is ERPR positive. And uh, we're talking of node negative situation. So can we go on to the next case, which is, uh, so I think, let me also clarify because there are so many, uh, you know, uh, attendees here in, in, the, in, the, in the webinar. So I think uh, all are perhaps correct. You know, it's not that one is not doing uh, uh, in uh, uh, the right, uh, you know, adjuvant chemo. So these are uh, debates which we have going on even, uh, you know, taxanes uh, being available to us for almost uh, uh, two or even three decades. And still, uh, we, uh, we don't have a, a clear uh, one answer uh, in a situation like this, which is not uncommon, I think, in our day-to-day -day practice. So next slide. Uh, sir, Amish here. But one thing which is very, very common and clear is that nobody would give TAC in this particular patient, right, sir? Yeah, yeah. So, so by and large, as you heard, uh, from four out of six panelists, uh, I think uh, all of them were in favor of uh, not giving an anthracycline to a patient who has a small tumor and who is uh, node negative. Amish, are you there? Yes, sir. I understood. And uh, ERPR strongly positive, sir. Yes, of course. We are talking of HER2 new negative, ER positive, uh, a small, uh, small tumor with the high uh, oncotype BX. You know, I mean, that would be applicable to a patient who can't afford oncotype DX. So that is another issue because a lot of patients cannot afford uh, oncotype DX. Right, sir. Know, right. So, you know, that this is the paper I was referring to. Uh, this is a BJC paper, six cycles of dosi and cyclophosphamide uh, compared uh, to anthra and taxane. Uh, you know, this gives you a similar outcome. It's a non-inferiority study. So the point is, the issue now remains is four versus six cycles of TC. So because I think three panelists did offer uh, four cycles of TC, uh, perhaps, uh, you know, I mean, this has become a little old. So to my mind, uh, I've been also offering four cycles of docetaxel and uh, cyclophosphamide. But then uh, looking at this new data, uh, which has emerged, uh, maybe, you know, I'm, I'm uh, sort of, thinking of changing my practice to six TC or six docetaxel cyclophosphamide instead of uh, four cycles of, um, you know, doses cyclophosphamide. So, and sir, this meta-analysis also says the same thing, na, sir, that six is better than four. Correct, correct. So, so that data seems to be building up now uh, that, you know, earlier which we were offering uh, four cycles of uh, TC uh, may be considered inadequate, uh, you know, and, and go on to six cycles of TC. So I'm right. all written here. Now let's, you know, change the scenario a little. We go to a little higher tumor size or a fully differentiated tumor. Uh, I think Amol is agreeing uh, to six cycles of TC. Uh, Amol, okay, would you like to make a comment here? Yes, sir. If we want to give TC and if the tumor size is more than T1, patient is poorly differentiated and of course other risk factors like nodal positivity, then six cycle TC should be given. But if the patient is less than if, if it is a T1 tumor, well differentiated, low grade tumor, and you want to avoid anthracyclines and give TC, then better give four cycles of TC is okay. We did not give six in that particular patient. But for a higher risk, if you want to give TC, better give six TC. Okay. So so uh, let me come to Krupa. Krupa, you know, if the patient is node positive, I mean, we were discussing node negative, where sure. most agree that anthracyclines can be can be skipped. So if the patient is node positive and the size of the tumor is say three centimeters, so, and of course your oncotype BX is, you know, again, 40 or whatever, I mean, it is high. So are you happy skipping anthra in, in such a situation? 
Well, uh, so I mean, like before I actually begin that, I think, you know, we have the data from the ABC as well, the anthracyclins and early breast cancer. That was again yet another meta-analysis that looked at the US Oncology Research Group trial and then the couple of NSABP trials. So, you know, the other thing to remember is probably, you know, all of this, the benefit is probably largely driven by the node positive and triple negative breast cancers as well. So, uh, you know, in that setting where the patient is node positive tumor size more than three centimeters, I would look at doing an anthra-based regimen here for this patient. Right. So, uh, although, you know, Amol Patel said uh, that there is no benefit from chemo in um, ER positive because he's writing on the other, you know, Q&A box. Uh, so, so uh, Krupa says that node positive patients, you like to use anthra and uh, docetaxel or a taxane, right? So, uh, so, Dr. Nikhil, what do you think in a node positive, ER positive patient? Sir, uh, if it's an N1 disease, sir, uh, I would do six cycles of docetaxel cyclophosphamide. And if it's beyond that N2 or N3, then the standard ACT would be my option, sir. Okay, four, four AC followed by a dexin, yes, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. So so I think uh, there is a, a dissection there also, depending upon the uh, nodal involvement, N1 versus N2. Uh, so Dr. Shalesh, what do you think? I mean, uh, in the node... Uh, you know, one, would you use a different protocol than as compared to N2? So I would uh, I would use uh, anthracyclines followed by tax and sequential okay. in both the situations. And leading leg and shoulder. 4, four AC followed by taxin, whether it is... 4 AC followed by T, yeah. Yeah, whether it is a weekly paclitaxel or, or uh, you know... Uh, so if, if I'm going to use a weekly regimen, it is going to be paclitaxel. If it's... If it's going right, to be right, three right. weeks, so I it use no Yeah, so so it's it, it, it's a taxin. So Advait, what do you think about HR positive? Uh, you know, her two new negative node positive breast cancer at Juven setting. Uh, most of the times, sir, we we use an anthracycline taxin sequential. Our choice for young fit patients is to go with the dose dense AC followed by Bakley. Uh, for those who are not fit to receive dose dense, uh, we use a sequential three weekly AC EC followed by docetaxel. Right. So great. So I think uh, I think the discussion point uh, was in the paper the use of TAC, which Dr. Amish uh, was trying to you know bring in, which I see uh, none of the panelists uh, you know uh, wanting to use that particular option. So, so any comments from um, the panelists regarding TAC in a you know high burden disease ER positive? Uh, Advait, since you are there, so sir, uh, TAC we've all used during our training, and we've all had problems where we burnt our fingers severely with patients landing up with neutropenia. Somehow, then managing the dose dense chemotherapy in younger, fitter patients seems to be much more feasible rather than doing full dose of TAC. Uh, what we've seen that the, the dose dense chemotherapy in this meta analysis also showed that it was similar to TAC, uh, right. the results. And uh, I think it is up to each and every center as to how their learning curve is and how well they are able to manage that they would decide. We all know that most of the German centers still use some form of TAC or they have, they have used NAP Paclitaxel, which was not included in this meta analysis. But uh, it, it is something which each uh, center has been. Uh, using for some point uh, time point and they are comfortable using these regimens because between TAC, we've seen that TAC is similar to the sequential. Sequence. Dose dense is probably similar to TAC. So either ways that we use it, as long as the intensity is maintained and the patient receives the planned number of cycles, that should that should be our approach. Right. So I think... Uh, yeah, sir, can I ask a question, Amish here? Yeah, Amish. Sir, in the in this particular meta analysis in the forest plot chart, every subset of ER positive has crossed the line of unity. So, uh, what Advait said is, you know, uh, sort of instead of that, in her strong hormone positive, whether N zero or N one, my question is, if I look at this meta analysis seriously, I do not require to give anthracycline. Is that something which we take it seriously or we do not change our practice just based on this meta-analysis? So what is your thought process, sir? You're asking me? Sir, I'm, I'm sorry, but <laughs> you, you can take it or you can pass it on to the panelists, sir. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, I think Chetan has already spoken. 
so so krupa what do you think you know i mean do you really uh, need to uh, go after tax you know i mean that is the question krupa are you there yeah uh, yes yeah, sir so i mean like i probably you know i i, I wouldn't look at probably you know the note positive subset definitely is probably different here say because you know like i said i probably draw a parallel to the abc meta analysis as well so there as well you saw that patients who were note positive i mean like they could not prove non inferiority of tc into 6 versus ac in taxon so in a note positive subset i would definitely be tempted towards using anthracyclines rather than avoiding anthracyclines in that subset given that the patient is young and fit and can tolerate anthracyclines i think that's how i would look at it uh, sir yeah so i think amish in the thought process is that if you have node positive you have to use anthracycline and you know whether you use it you know as as a concurrent uh, with like in tac or you use sequential as advait said so uh, we are happy both ways the only issue is the toxicity uh, for the for the triple drug regimen is is certainly higher than as compared to a sequential treatment although i think those dense treatment should be should be offered there so that'll be my take but then i think uh, as as you see uh, amongst the panelists again uh, there is a uh, discussion so i think uh, these are practical points uh, which you have to you know kind of decide uh, in the clinic depending upon your experience with tac and the other dose dense regimens so i think we can move on to the next uh, yeah okay so uh, you know these are the other things which we are coming here that in the mind act and in the taylor x study i mean they have not shown any difference uh, for anthra and non anthra protocols and therefore that's also you know although i mean the follow up is short etc but then as uh, of now uh, the non anthra protocols in these studies are also doing same and as compared to the anthra based protocols next next so i think uh, again uh, this is another study uh, where uh, in a in 6000 patients the showed that anthra may not be required in most of the patients with intermediate or high risk uh, her to negative uh, early breast cancer there no difference in dfs or os except for lobular or for n2 n3 tumors in addition adverse events are significantly higher with anthracycline based regimens Seventy-six uh, percent versus seventy. So these are the other two other you know uh, data which which also help us take a decision uh, for using or not using anthracite. Next. So I think uh, we can skip this slide. Uh, this was basically for again for ERP or elderly individual. But I think we have covered most of these things. Next slide. Next. So we can go to. Uh, uh, I think um, this is just to sum it up. This is a statement from uh, an author. anthracyclines should be restricted to patients with a very high risk of recurrence of t3 t4 more than n2 uh, with high biological aggressiveness and uh, this group is still underrepresented in clinical trials uh, the strategy could reduce the risk of long term toxicity namely cardio and hematologic so any comments on these statements from any of the panelists is most welcome and then we move on to the next case dr nikhil no. sir i do agree sir uh, because uh, with er positive disease uh, there is a rx ponder trial where one to three nodes are still depending on the menopausal status uh, there is an option of not offering them chemotherapy also so i think uh, we should we should tailor it to patients disease status and disease biology as well as disease load is what i feel sir right so uh, can we go on to the next slide i think so we can look at the uh, her to uh, 3 plus which is perhaps less uh, controversial uh, 56 years post menopausal uh, t2 n1 uh, the next uh, slide so these are the options uh, so the issue is uh, whether you would use uh, you know a, a non anthracycline versus an anthracycline based uh, protocol so the patient is otherwise fit echo is normal no comorbidities uh, t2 n1 so we come to a new adjuvant uh, situation so amol what are you doing in the clinic if the cost is not an issue tchp otherwise tch okay so so you would like to uh, not use an anthracycline here yes, so shalish dr shalish 
Uh, TCHP finances is not an issue. Otherwise, AC followed by TH. Okay, so TCHP, and if you don't want, so why not TCH? Hello, uh, Shalish. So okay, so if you so you want to, you, I mean, you feel that pertuzumab can be uh, sort of, uh, I mean, anthra can be a replacement for that pertuzumab, right? Shalish, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I agree. Okay. So, okay. So that is Adwait. Yeah, I would, I would go for an AC followed by TH in this, sir. These patients are the ones who would, uh, the T2, we do not know whether it is a higher end T2 or a lower rate T2. T2 would also differ a, a 2.5 centimeter T2 would not behave like a 5 centimeter T2. So uh, most of the patients with HER2 positivity generally do present with the larger uh, primaries. Uh, in them, I prefer to use, uh, and especially with the ER positivity, I would not go for a TCH kind of regimen because we've, we've seen the data that uh, it works better for the ER negative subgroup uh, rather than the ER positive. And here I would use an AC followed by TH or a AC followed by THP if the patient has uh, uh, adequate finances. So your, your choice is to go for, uh, you know, uh, and anthracycline. Yes, sir. So for anthracycline. Uh, Nikhil? Sir, so same. Uh, TCHP or AC followed by THP would be my options. Okay. Uh, Krupa? Uh, Dr. Krupa Shankar? Okay, maybe he, he's not there. Dr. Chetan, so what is the current uh, you know practice? At my place, it's usually AC followed by TH. And, and uh, though I'm not averse to using uh, TCH or T, uh, TCH for a lady who is younger than 60, but I would I would give her both the options. I would have a lengthy discussion with her about toxicity. And uh, if all uh, is favorable, then uh, my go-to regime is still AC followed by TH. So, okay. So I think, uh, can we go to the next slide? So I think uh, this is uh, the data where uh, you know, uh, the BCIRG 06 study uh, where uh, the, the, you know, the TCH uh, is considered almost uh, equivalent uh, to uh, AC followed by TH, although they were not powered for a comparison, but then the 10-year uh, overall survival and the DFS rates are almost similar. And uh, next slide. I think this is one area to my mind uh, where... Uh, Anthracyclines can be uh, skipped, you know, uh, with uh, reasonable confidence, and most of the panelists do agree to this. And this is another issue which we like to, you know, have comments on uh, from uh, from the from the panelists regarding the long term toxicity of congestive heart failure and uh, leukemia in the in this particular study. So, Dr. Amol, what are your thoughts on the on the side effects, you know, related to anthracyclines? So as far as this meta-analysis is concerned, they have very categorically said that they don't have the quality of life data, neither they have cardiotoxicity data at the individual patient level. They had only given the mortality data and they have given the second cancer data. And right. what they've said is that one in 700 patients will getting acute myeloid leukemia. And that is something uh, which is, of course, I, am, I will discuss with the patient if it, is, if it comes to that, but that is a significant thing. I, mean, I don't want my patient to end up getting a second malignancy, that too like an acute myeloid leukemia. So uh, the meta-analysis doesn't comment at all about cardiotoxicity part or the quality of life data parts, but uh, that needs to be seen when you are saying that anthracycline should be preferred um, because that is important from patient point of view. Yeah, so, so you know, that is one issue. And of course, the cardiac toxicity is, is, is another issue. So, you know, both these uh, toxicity issues uh, will, you know, uh, weigh in favor of TCHP, I mean, instead of uh, the anthracycline based. So, uh, Dr. Krupa, what do you think, you know, I mean, I mean, are we, should we be really offering anthracycline in a HER2 positive patient who can afford uh, pertuzumab? <clears throat> I think there is a problem in his connection. Uh, Nikhil, what do you think? Sir, Krupa is there. He answered on the chat box, but somehow he is not audible. 
Yeah, <clears throat> hope I'm audible now. Can you hear me now, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're audible now. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, so I think you know, as far as the HER2 positive disease is concerned, I would definitely look at using only non-anthracycline regimen. Even if you look at this meta-analysis, I mean, like it was very underpowered to answer that question of whether anthracyclines will be effective in uh, HER2 positive disease as well. Only around twenty percent. So you know, not convincing enough for me to actually look at adding anthracyclines, especially for HER2 positive disease, because we have a lot of <clears throat> data. Even in the new adjuvant setting and in the adjuvant setting as well, to actually drop anthracyclines, be it the trend, be it from the Neosphere data and the NOAA data, all of that where we could, we know, and even the Trifina data, all of that have shown that we can definitely look at dropping anthracyclines in her to positive disease. So I think uh, for me, um, you know, as well as especially if I'm doing a double dual her to block it, it makes sense for me to do a non anthracycline containing regimen. Only the, the only reason where I would probably look at doing an anthracycline based regimen for HER2 positive disease is if, if I'm looking at doing a shortened duration of trastuzumab. If I want to give only six months of trastuzumab, again, we have the Indian data again from Dr. Sudeep Gupta as well. So there I would look at using an anthracycline if I want to give only six months or a shortened duration of trastuzumab. And that's right. how I would look at doing it. <laughs> right. So what I'm getting is that if you are not able to afford trastuzumab, or if you're not able to afford full dose of, uh, you know, trastuzumab, and then obviously uh, pertuzumab, well, then you want to pitch in with anthra uh, so as to get, uh, you know, some kind of uh, additional efficacy. So, Shalesh, you agree with this, you know, trick or this, um, you know, approach of, uh, you know, putting in um, anthracycline if somebody cannot afford pertuzumab? Shalesh? Or, or Dr. Advait? So, so essentially, sir, I wouldn't say it's a replacement for not giving pertuzumab. Mm -hmm. I think one has to decide this upfront what they want to treat with. Right. Uh, and based on the stage of the disease, most of the times our decision for what regimen to be used depends on the clinical stage as well as the pathological stage for the post-operative cases. And then the cost of therapy and everything comes together and we, we decide. But as, as Krupa rightly mentioned that, yes, for the six months trastuzumab, the anthracycline arm did better. Uh, for uh, uh, the patients who can't go for pertuzumab, does anthracycline add on that benefit? We really don't have an answer to it. Right. So, okay, great. So can we go to the next? But I think in how to new positive, if patients can afford pertuzumab, then I think uh, anthracyclines perhaps can be and, and, and there is data from uh, Trifina, as we know, in the new adjuvant setting. Next slide. And even for, from uh, the TRAIN2 study, uh, where uh, you know the non-anthracycline regimens gave a similar PCR rate uh, than as compared to anthracycline, although you know this sample size was small. But you know the toxicities also do come into picture. You know when we are using uh, anthracyclines, which should also be you know discussed with the patient uh, before you know the. I mean, I understand that, I mean, it's going to be long-term toxicity, but then these patients who are, you know, 45, 50 years of age, they're going to be cured and they're going to be living on for another 30 years, who knows, 40 years. So, so I think uh, this toxicity of uh, MDS, acute leukemia, uh, and even the cardiac toxicity should be uh, uh, kept in mind while deciding a particular protocol. Uh, next slide. Sir, can, can I comment something here, sir? Amish here. Yeah. Sir, I was just looking at uh, Sara Tolani's regimen, although it's an adjuvant setting, and it is, uh, there is there is nowhere they have written, like what Advait said is a very interesting thing, but nowhere it is written that if you have ER positive, then you should add anthracycline and they have done inferior with TNH. So my point is, sir, that in her to positive, I think you know, there are a few students also listening to this. Um, what is our over majority take in her to positive in HR positive versus HR negative, should we have a different policy of anthra versus no anthra? No, we should not have different policy. So, you're right. So, Amol says uh, no difference in the policy. Dr. Shalesh, are you there? Yeah, I think it's, it depends on the comorbidity and the general condition of the patient whether we need to avoid anthracyclines. Otherwise, I think we should try and give anthracyclines. Okay, you are for anthracyclines, but uh, okay, uh, but then uh, does ERPR status, uh, you know, affect uh, the regimen which you're going to use? That is the question. 
or you will use AC no. followed by THP in all cases. AC followed by TH. Right. So okay. So nice. okay, we get it. Uh, Doctor Nikhil, does the ERPR status, you know, because I think uh, you get lesser, you know, CR rates in patients who are ER positive in the new adjuvant setting. Uh, does that affect your, uh, you know, a chemo regimen or, uh, you know, TCHP versus an anthracycline based? Uh, no, sir. No, I don't decide on that. Yeah. yeah so, uh, Amish, uh, uh, Dr. Chetan, are you there, sir? Yes, sir. I'm there, sir. So, what about, you know, what, do you, what is your thought in a patient who is ER positive, whether to use an anthracycline there or just give the TCHP? <clears throat> Sir, my go-to regime remains AC followed by TH. I don't base my uh, regime uh, on ERPR. Uh, right. So, you know, the same. Yes. Right. So, no, I think sir, you sir, I have a difference of opinion here yeah, from the other panelists. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. See, I have the table open of Tolani's regimen, sir. 64 to 68 percent of patients were ER positive. Mm -hmm. It is HER2 positive, ER positive, 12 weekly paclitaxel plus trastuzumab minus anthracycline, seven years follow up data. Why do we need anthracycline in HR positive, in HER2 positive patients in early breast cancer, sir? Where is the data? Yeah, with tolerance, that? See, the, the tolerance regimen is for very early small tumors. Yeah, no negative, yes. right. Yeah, yeah, three up yes. to three centimeter. What Correct, I'm trying to no say. Negative. Negative. Uh, negative. One second, one second, please. So until now we were discussing T two N one. So you actually switched the uh, case scenario for something like up to three centimeter node negative patients, where the APT protocol is acceptable. I think Advait, you agree? Yes, sir. I agree completely. Yeah. Amol, you agree? Yes, sir. For uh, for low risk, uh, tolerance protocol is good. Right, up to three centimeter node negative. Uh, Dr. Yes, Nikhil? Yes, sir, 100%. So any, any dissenters? Sir, uh, one node positive, mein kya? where is the data? Which hey, come, on. Like, come on, come on, come on. Anthracycline helps, sir. Amish, <laughs> Amish, Amish, you're node positive. There is Amish, 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 no, sir. Yeah. Amish, may I make a comment? comment? Yeah, sure. Sorry. Please, Amish, please. Can, can you, can you, sir. Can you, sir. Yeah, state your question. You know, what is your thought process? Uh, <clears throat> sir, I feel that uh, in uh, HR, uh, HER2 positive is driven by anti HER2. And as I think Dr. Kripa Shankar said, that if you are planning to give one year of anti HER2, uh, if the patient can afford in early breast cancer, except for N2, N3, sir. N1 disease ke liye, I don't think we have sufficient data to say anthra is better than TCH or anthra is better than T plus uh, well, uh, Texan plus uh, Trastuzumab. So, Krupa, that is what my Krupa, point is. Sir. I, I understand. So, actually, what you are trying to uh, sort of, uh, you are bringing down the relevance of N1 node positive, you know, I mean. Correct. I mean, right, sir. Right, sir. So, Krupa, do you agree? So, uh, definitely, I would agree with <clears throat> Dr. Amish, sir, yeah, sir, because I think, you know, definitely, even in the node positive subset, even if it is N1, I mean, like, uh, we can still... Can I ask you a direct question, Prupa? Will you give yeah, yeah, to N1 patient? Sorry, sir, I can't... Will you give I APT you protocol to N1 patient? No, no, not the APT protocol. I mean, the TCH regimen, what sir. He's, he's pushing the so Tolani study, you know, for N1... No, no, the Tolani study... Oh, no, sir, sir, I'm talking of non entra sir. I'm not talking of Tolani, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just <laughs> give an example of Tolani, sir. Ultimately, I think, sir, if we torture the data enough, it will confess to whatever we want it to confess to. But, but I think the app protocol definitely is for node negative and for tumors less than three centimeters, where right. 12 cycles of weekly packly and trastuzumab for one year. But having said that, even, even if it's node positive, I'm comfortable doing a TCH protocol, adjuvant setting, based yeah. on the BCIRGO6 data. So I think, you know, um, it, it is fair enough that I could even look at avoiding anthracyclines in the adjuvant setting, even if it's node positive for her to positive disease. Yeah, you know, Krupa, the point is that today in practice, a patient who has a two centimeter plus tumor, we are not talking of adjuvant, we are talking of new adjuvant. Absolutely, sir. But I'm, I'm just saying even in the adjuvant setting, sir, I mean, like if, if right. for example, and even in the new adjuvant setting, I think, you know, we, we do have the data like you've rightly shown all from the train to data. Yeah. And again, the 
uh, the Neosphere, Nova, all of that, you know, they've used only a taxane background with either dual herd to block it as well. So we do have the data even in that setting to actually look at avoiding anthracyclines. So it's not like anthracyclines are a must for her to positive disease. Right. So I think uh, I understand there is some debate there. But then uh, next slide, please. I think uh, even from, uh, I think there is another slide in the end, which I'll show you if the time permits, uh, that most, even the NCCN is, you know, looking at non-anthracycline regimens uh, in uh, two new positive patients. So let's switch to uh, one, another case scenario of uh, triple negative, a node negative. So again, a small tumor, surgery done, what adjuvant chemo to be given in this scenario? So node positive, I think everybody agrees to uh, anthracycline to my mind, but then let's talk about this particular. Uh, so, I mean, written so many regimens here, <laughs> uh, 4TC, 6TC, TAC. Uh, so the point is whether it should be anthracycline based or non-anthracycline based. Nikhil, what do you think? Sir, anthracycline based and uh, dose dense 4AC, 4T, sir. Dose dense 4 AC 40. Shailesh, what do you think? Age of the patient. Age 45 years, a fit patient. Yeah, yeah. Dose dense 4 AC followed by. Okay, so so I think both the uh, panelists are saying uh, must use anthracycline. Uh, so, uh, uh, Krupa? So, I'll, I'll probably play the devil's advocate here again. I'll choose the any other. I'll choose the any other and say six cycles of Packley Carbo based on the pattern study, phase three data, Chinese data, fine, agreed. But then, you know, I would I would uh, probably stick to doing that. Six cycles of Packley Carbo, as you in setting, of pattern phase three data. Because you're saying it's node negative, early TNBC. So six cycles of Packley Carbo for me. Okay, Packley Carbo. And Shalish, uh, did, did we get your view, Shalish? Yeah, I said, I if this is a young patient, if it is a young patient, four AC were followed by T dose dense. Okay, uh, Advait, I didn't. I think we didn't get Advait. Yeah, so uh, I agree with Shailesh, sir. For uh, dose dense AC and 40 in a younger patient, in elderly patients, uh, even docetaxel carboplatin is what we <laughs> we've used. Uh, <laughs> but it's it's more from the metastatic setting that we extrapolate for patients who cannot go for anthracycline. Okay, uh, Dr. Chetan, what do you think for mm -hmm. a small tumor, triple negative, um, adjuvant chemo? Young fit lady, sir. Uh, yes. Four AC, four Packley dose dense. Four AC, four Packley. Okay, okay. So, I think everybody wants to use, by and large, uh, barring one, uh, an anthracycline based regimen, and that to dose dense. So, and that's interesting. Uh, next slide. So, I think this is some data which I wanted to quote. Um, uh, that you know, I mean, this was of course data from uh, elderly uh, patients uh, where um, showed uh, inferior three-year overall survival cancer-specific survival for anthracycline and taxane chemo. So here, this particular data, you know, from here is showing uh, no, uh, inferior results with the combination of taxane and anthracycline. And the three-year, uh, you know, the cancer-specific survival was 93% with taxane as compared to 90%. So maybe these are early days uh, for uh, you know, elderly patients who, who are exposed to the combination of, and so, so does the age change the uh, treatment uh, uh, regimen, uh, uh, Krupa? No, I wouldn't think so, sir, because you know, I, I, you know, I don't know, maybe I, I, I'm probably a bit biased here, but then I, you know, I, I'm greatly impressed with the Chinese data. Okay, you want carbo, okay, okay, you want so yeah, Nikhil, I wanted to do Packley and Carbo in those uh, yeah, early stage. Very, uh, interesting, very interesting. So, you know, I mean, I have Dr. Subdeep Gupta's, uh, you know, uh, on the new adjuvant, uh, where he That's says uh, that Carbo benefits mainly the, uh, you know, younger, less than 50 years. Uh, so, uh, so Nikhil, what do you think? Elderly, node negative, triple negative? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, mostly, I would like to do a weekly taxane in this particular set of patients. And if they are fit for anthracycline, yes. So you'll give both if yeah. the patient is fit, 66 years old fit. Yes. Dalesh? Uh, I may not do, go for a dose dense. I might give three weekly AC followed by T in case the patient is more than 65 years of age. Okay. But I will keep anthracycline as an option. Anthracycline is always there. Amol, anthracycline in elderly uh, for 66 years, triple negative? 
No negative? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But not dose dense, as Dr. Shailesh said. We'll give it three weekly. All right. So it seems but that... But will be given. Right. Be given. Right, right, right. So I get it from all the panelists. That, except, of course, Krupa, I think, who wants to use Carbo instead. Uh, and um, uh, so... Krupa, uh, Krupa, is saying, Krupa is saying too many Chinese movies nowadays. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> but don't never don't underestimate the Chinese movies huh, at your own peril. Right. So the Chinese are, you know, threatening the immune checkpoint in a better arena as well <laughs> to the Americans. So I think what I'm getting is that in triple negative, whether you are node negative or node positive, uh so and anthracyclines are there to stay. Amish, you want to have any say here? Sir. <clears throat> Early breast cancer, no negative, triple negative. I think Krupa has uh, some point which we need to ponder. Of course, I will also give anthracycline in this particular patient. But uh, sir, please, if you see this particular meta-analysis, N0 and ER negative yeah. are the maximum group which have benefited out of TAC regimen, sir. So that is something which is sort of a takeaway for me that if definitely in this particular group, Anthra is not uh, to be uh, sacrificed. But with the addition of carboplatin, how much is the Anthra in triple negative is a question mark. So I don't have an answer to this question. Right. So, you know, if I remember correct, the TAC regimen for four and plus nodes was not that good. Amish, since you have reviewed it so much, uh, do you agree? Sir, uh, <clears throat> ER positive. And node positive, ER negative, and node negative, and ER negative, and node positive. In the last two cohorts, what I said is that the TAC has the highest on the left hand side towards the combination. But as I said, this particular meta analysis did not answer the question what Krupa has quoted the two trials. Right, okay, so I don't right. think we have the answer in 2023 about that. So. So just to add on, sir, uh, again, the same Chinese network meta-analysis, uh, which recently published in the Breast Journal, where they tried to evaluate the efficacy of platinum in triple negative breast cancer. So there was definite evidence in terms of event-free survival, PCR rates with the addition of platinum to the standard chemotherapy arm. So that's in the new adjuvant setting, right? Both in the new adjuvant <laughs> and adjuvant setting, sir. Yeah. yeah, so that is, I think, what I was also uh, quoting from the TMS, Dr. Subib's study. Uh, that he found the maximum benefit in, in uh, premenopausal oh, patients okay. under 50 years uh, in EFS ever, uh, as well as overall survival uh, for Beckley Carbo followed by uh, AC or, you know, uh, EC. So, so I think, uh, so there's a, there's a role for carboplatinum definitely for, uh, especially in the new adjuvant and even in, uh, I think, Propa says, uh, even for node negative individuals. I think, uh, next slide, I think we've covered uh, a, a few uh, scenarios here. So I think I'm going to make a few statements uh, before uh, we close. And that for HER2 positive or luminal breast cancer uh, may not require an anthracycline-based chemotherapy, uh, except for those with an important uh, tumor burden. So, I mean, that is a statement which uh, people can contest, but that's my feeling. In HER2 positive disease, well, actually, as I said, anthracyclines are uh, not preferred, uh, even in some of the international guidelines. For HER2 negative, anthracyclines, though critical, but taxane based uh, chemotherapy is one of the preferred regimens, as well as remains a valuable uh, therapeutic option for patients. So, so, Dr. Chetan, any comments on these statements? Since you are the. I remote, agree. <laughs> No, no, sir, I agree. These are uh, extremely important statements. Yes, and very vital. You've almost got out the gist of it. Right. So, so that Amol, uh, your thoughts? I agree, sir. I agree. So, so anybody that, wants to add to uh, to these thoughts? If, 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 I just wanted to add that if the in HER2 positive patients, if you are affording to take both dual anti HER2 blocker you may skip anthracycline, but if you're not able to take them, or as Dr. Krupa said, you're not able to take one year of trastuzumab also, then one may consider anthracycline to tie it over in our yeah, patients think, where the cost is an issue. Yeah, Advait uh, made that point. Advait, any thoughts here, please? Um, no, sir. I think I think the, the thing is very clear that for six months of uh, trastuzumab duration, anthracycline, if one is not able to use dual... Um, anti her 2 agents, I do not know whether uh, giving only TCH is going to be there because 
we've seen that the new adjuvant data is great, but uh, most of the times we would end up giving anthracyclines to these patients and use a sequential anthracycline taxane plus trastuzumab. So Nikhil, anything you want to add or say, please? Uh... Sure, yes, the, the only reason why we moved away from anthracyclines is the concern of toxicity. I think the meta-analysis has brought out, though not on the cardiotoxicity, but in terms of leukemia, that it's really, really rare. And uh, whenever there is an come to that, and I'm going to show you the last slide before we move on and then close the session. Yeah. Dr. Shalesh, any thoughts there? Oh, no, sir, I agree with you. Right. So, so you know, this is the last uh, slide which I thought I'll show. That is the secondary hematologic, uh, you know, malignancies, AML and MDS. Uh, that included anthracycline overall rates per 1,000 <coughs> person years were 0.65 for AML and 1.56 for MDS. So I think uh, we need, need to uh, weigh this and we all know that anthracycline based regimens uh, did have the cardiac issues. So, you know, I mean, we tend to perhaps ignore them, you know, I mean, or maybe we feel that 1% or even less than that, but then the LVEF, which is reversible, I know, but then I think we really need to keep that in mind, uh, taking, a, taking a decision. So I think uh, a more, uh, Amish is saying that we are uh, running out of time uh, and we are actually on dot. Uh, let me just you know, congratulate uh, Purvish and Amish uh, because I see in the participants more than 90 people staying on. So I congratulate each and everybody on the panel who has really you know, contributed and keep the session so lively that almost none of uh, the attendees uh, wanted to leave the session. So thank you very much uh, for this interactive program and giving me this opportunity and to all the panelists who really, really uh, brought out uh, uh, so many points uh, relating to adjuvant and neoadjuvant therapy in breast cancer. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, I think this was your magic where, you know, so many people wanted to continue. It's a joint <laughs> magic of all uh, panelists and speaker and uh, and Amish and Purvish, I guess. And uh, <laughs> sir, also, I think um, one of uh, the, you know, the also, uh, at least I am also waiting to hear from uh -huh. uh, Dr. Sudeep Gupta. Uh, what is his thought process about uh, the entire uh, discussion, what we had? And I must say that Sudeep has been a great, great, great proponent of OBTO and he is a great guide for OBTO. I keep reaching out to him all the time. And I always, whenever my call comes in, he'll say, Abish, I'll be a chairperson or I'll be an expert. So every time I reach out to Sudeep, he's always a very, very uh, you know, positive towards OBTO. And I would say, Sudeep, we are waiting to hear from you. Uh, please, uh, I know ISMPO executive committee meeting also is going on, but it would be really interesting for all of us and to students. What do you think about this? Do we have Sudeep here? Uh, can we? Sir, 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 we just contact sir again. Uh, Tell Sudeep that 90 people are waiting to hear from him. Maybe there is some animated discussion going on there. We'll wait for two minutes. Shyam, sir. Shyam, sir. Yeah, yeah Mish. Sir, uh, Tarini Sahu had written the last question, and I think you can take up that question that in a new adjuvant setting, if you are using dual anti HER2, does carboplatin really make uh, any sense? Right. Uh, so, you know, I, or DTHP? Yeah, so, I think I had mentioned uh, the ongoing studies where they are trying to you know, eliminate uh, platinum uh, from the protocol using uh, you know, weekly paclitaxel or, or docetaxel. So those are the two protocols where they're wanting to adapt uh, depending upon the initial results. So I think until we have more data, uh, we cannot eliminate uh, carbo at this point in time. I think maybe in the next one to two years, if you have the data in that direction, then carbo can be uh, considered to be maybe you know uh, unnecessary. So at the moment, I think uh, we don't understand because the data is still uh, pending. 
<clears throat> the adept data is out i think that is what tarini is writing no, i have not that. seen so maybe this um, asco there are going to be discussions so yeah so so i think um, to my knowledge at the moment we need to wait i have also not seen sir right uh, sudeep uh, sudeep are you there started logging in sir so it is logging in okay 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 then we'll wait are advait nikalna nahi hai abhi sudeep ko sun ke ja clinic mein 2 minute aur late jana tarini let us see till sudeep is joining Did you call him? Did you call Sudeep? Oh, yes, sir. Ah, oh, he's joining. He's not answering. He's joining. No, is he or joining or is he? He said that he's joining in some time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've joined Amish. Sudeep, uh, yes, we were desperately waiting for you. There were ninety-two people who were waiting for you, and they didn't uh, drop no, out. No, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. There was an ISMP executive committee meeting, and you know, I just couldn't take myself out of that. I'm so sorry. No issue, Sudeep. Uh, did you listen to the discussion? No, I have to confess that I have not listened to the discussion, but I've read the paper. so right there are you know the two three questions for you sudeep uh, one is uh, where do you see the role of anthracycline today in early breast cancer one second thing is in her2 positive and hr positive is there a role of anthracycline and third is uh, what tarini sahu asked tchp versus thp what is the role of carboplatin but you can start with your analysis of the meta analysis this particular so uh, this meta analysis has put together a whole lot of trials that have looked at essentially two questions what is the value of addition of anthracyclines to a taxane based chemotherapy regimen and conversely what is the value of addition of a taxane based chemotherapy to an anthracycline regimen both questions have been uh, kind of answered um my own take is that although there are elements that are good in this particular analysis but the trials the subgroups within the trials are too heterogeneous to make a make sense out of this or make coherent sense out of the data uh, i think this meta analysis the take away message for me was that it suggests that there is possibly a role for anthracyclines there is still value in using anthracyclines in some situations but you know their whole analysis about whether concurrent anthracyclines with taxanes or sequential is better or you know whether uh, more anthracycline uh, versus less anthracyclines uh, same dose of docetaxel versus more dose of docetaxel i think that is splitting hairs a bit too much and i personally felt that all of those analyses are based on only a very small proportion of the data so essentially it is looking at the individual trials my own take away from this analysis is that there is probably some utility of anthracyclines but it is for each of us to judge where exactly that utility is the other thing that i might tell you is that what i found a little bit discordant here is that they suggest that the proportional benefit of anthracyclines is the same in older individuals versus younger individuals now this is somewhat discordant with more recent data which is not the same question it is chemotherapy yes versus no and our own analysis that i presented in the san antonio breast cancer symposium the emerging theme is that either chemotherapy yes versus no or more chemotherapy versus less chemotherapy 
has a differential benefit in younger and older individuals and age does have a meaning and many, many trials, RX, Ponder, Taylor X, our own Tata Memorial TNBC trial that I presented, everything points when age interaction, which was not the case here. And I felt that that is possibly because, you know, all kinds of apples and oranges were put into one basket and then the age analysis was done. So that's my whole take on this particular analysis. Uh, your second question was, where do I see the role for anthracyclines? So I can tell you that I definitely think that anthracyclines continue to have a role in triple negative breast cancer. And I think also in, uh, in um, HER2 positive breast cancer. Um, especially in HER2 positive breast cancer in scenarios where the current state of the art or state of the science uh, HER2 targeted therapy may not be possible. So when that is not the case, I think anthracyclines, especially in those situations, anthracyclines do have a role because anthracyclines continue to be to be good agents in uh, in HER2 positive disease. In ER positive, maybe you know one can do away with anthracyclines in some scenarios. In HER2 positive breast cancer, maybe one can do away with anthracyclines in some situations where you know one is ready to use everything that is as per as per current evidence all the her two targeted therapies and maybe one can do away with anthracyclines and use the taxane and carboplatin regimen so that's in general my take on anthracyclines um and your third question was what so uh, TCHP versus THP, those who can afford. But before that, Sudeep, one of the main question is where do you place TAC today in 2023 after this meta-analysis? So I can tell you that between Dr. Reena Nair and myself, we treated 198 patients with TAC or 199, close to that number. And that was way back when the PCIRG trial was published. And my own impression is that TAC is an efficacious regimen. The quality of the response, the depth of the, the quality of the remission is possibly, and this is just an impression, I cannot quote you data for this, that the quality of the remissions is very good in the sense that those you know, people survive for a long time, even with high-risk disease. But the problem with TAC is that TAC is a very toxic regimen. And it will lead to unexpected toxicity and even fatal toxicity in an occasional patient. So I think currently we have given up using TAC and I think most people, I think Dr. Doval uses TAC very frequently if I'm not wrong. Uh, he continues to use TAC and he swears by TAC. But you know, in our scenario and in most other situations, I think most people will, would not use TAC. And as is also discussed in this paper, we had the NSABP trial that showed that dose dense AC paclitaxel will lead to the same outcome as TAC time six. So I think dose dense AC paclitaxel is a much easier regimen and a more and a safer regimen compared with TAC. So uh, based on this meta analysis, right now you would not uh, put TAC anywhere in any armamentarium of early breast cancer. Yes, I mean, you know, where would you use it? You tell me. It's, I'm asking uh, you. <laughs> no, but I, yeah, you know, I don't think that. Uh, by the way, am I the interview? I was just supposed to make some polite comments in that. <laughs> you started kidding? quizzing me. <laughs> Who will Not miss correct. the chance of asking you questions? Sudeep? No, 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 no. <laughs> the ISMP executive committee is still going on. I took leave for about two, three minutes just to make some <laughs> banal comments. No, I think, you know, entire, we all keep waiting for your comments, Sudeep. You know that very well. And then your comments always, you know, make a difference. Oh, thank you so much Chetan for saying so. Chetan, Chetan, during his interview, said that after Gupta search, two of the meta-analysis, I changed my practice. One is uh, shorter duration versus longer duration. And second is your uh, TNBC carboplatin data. And uh, so we all keep waiting uh, for the comments from you, Sudeep. Thank you. I think you have answered everything uh, so far. And one of the places where we were looking at TAC in this particular meta-analysis is a very young patient uh, who you want to avoid paclitaxel uh, toxicity, say a doctor or a surgeon by profession or a singer by profession or a musician by profession. In a heavy nodal high-risk disease, would you use TAC or not in a younger patient? That was one question which we were asking. 
you know, precisely such a situation, I tell you, in Tata Memorial Center, we lost one physician, young physician to TAC in the adjuvant setting. And I told one of my colleagues not to use it after I had already burnt my fingers and then, you know, it happened after the fourth cycle. So, I mean, you know, that's just a one-off. I personally think, I mean, in such a situation that you are describing, one could also use dose-dense uh, uh, anthracyclines and taxane. Why not? Sequential. It has been, it is, it is proven to have the same outcome. Right. No, thank you so much, Sudeep. We have taken a lot of your time. And, uh, you know, uh, I think what... The so can you tell me what was, the, what was the conclusion of the panel? I'm very interested in knowing that <laughs> about we this will paper. Send, we will send you the recording also. But I think what you have concluded and Shyam sir did a wonderful job <clears throat> about that. I think anthracycline is here to stay. <clears throat> One of the only point uh, where... Uh, one of the panelists didn't agree with your conclusion and Shamsar's conclusion. That was Krupa Shankar, who is very fascinated by Chinese data rather than Chinese movies, as Amol said. Uh, that in, in an adjuvant setting, uh, early breast cancer, triple negative, he may use Pakli Carbo rather than using anthracycline. <clears throat> Amish, uh, Dr. Sham here. Sir, sir, please go ahead. I think as uh, Dr. Sudeep has said, so none of the panelists was, uh, you know, keen on using TAC, which Amish uh, kept wanting to push to <laughs> everyone. So no, this... sir. No, I didn't want to push. Right. I just wanted to say, I just, the whole paper was selected, sir. Right. Just because it is from EBCTCG, just because it is in 2023, one lakh patients and Lancet publication doesn't mean that we have to take everything as a gospel truth. So that was, I was being devil's advocate there, sir. Right. So I think everybody concurred on that aspect on the toxicity front and the equivalent efficacy with dose dense AC followed by T. Right, sir. Yeah. Except, sir, Krupa Shankar. <laughs> but, but you know, it, it is not wrong to use TAC. It will not be wrong. But you know, uh, if people have enough experience and they will know that, you know, why uh, sort of put the patient in a situation where they may they may be required for an emergency admission and, you know, all kinds of uh, emergency management, it's not such a good idea. And, uh, and especially when you have some safer alternative. And, you know, in triple negative breast cancer, to do away with anthracyclines, actually there is least amount of data in triple negative breast cancer to do away with anthracyclines. So, you know, one can argue justifiably and most people do not give anthracyclines now in HER2 positive breast cancer and that is okay. But in triple negative, even if you look at the immune checkpoint inhibitor trials, at least the one that has changed practice, it does incorporate uh, anthracyclines and, you know, it would not be appropriate to do away with anthracyclines in TNBC. Right. Uh, Dr. Sudeep, you, your, your, your work at Tata was also quoted in which uh, platinum with uh, practically followed by, you know, anthracycline uh, in the right. new adjuvant setting, in especially right. pre-menopausal uh, women. Uh, right. Accepted. Right. 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 Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Shyam, sir. Thank you, Sudeep. And thank you, Chetan. Uh, I think, you know, very, very uh, lively, invigorating discussion. Uh, Shyam sir, jaha bhi rahenge, waha lively discussion to hoga hi hoga. Uh, and, but all the panelists also in, uh, gave a very good input. And Sudeep, as always, in the end, uh, your conclusion always gives us a nice takeaway messages. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. And we wait till the next OBTO. That is the second Tuesday of every month. Thank you so much. And with this, uh, we can um, conclude the session. Thank, Thank you. you, Amish. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. So, with your permission, we may end the meeting. Yes, yes. Please, please end the session, please. <laughs>